All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, quite spontaneous stream where we're going to continue looking at the uh, CTF challenges from the um, Swedish uh, high school championship in security, uh, Säkerhets SM. So I did a stream a few weeks ago where we started looking at the problems from the qualifier. And uh, we'll continue with that today. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's quite late here, so I'll probably just uh, go on for like, I don't know, an hour or one and a half or something. But uh, yeah, we'll see how many challenges we manage to do. And um, yeah, uh, please tell me if there's like uh, any issues with uh, sound or picture or anything. And uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get going. So this competition was, uh, it took place about a month ago. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, it's aimed towards like high school students in, in Sweden. Uh, but the challenges, uh, should be accessible to like a lot of people and they are available. Uh, there's a link in the description. Uh, where you can get the challenges yourself if you want to try them out. So, yeah, hello, people in chat, and good evening, or, you know, whatever the time is where you are. So I just stored some notes here from last time. We managed to do all of the forensics, all of the reversing, uh, some of the pwn. Um, so let's mix it up. Let's do some web now, I think. That's a good... Uh, uh, a good, nice uh, thing to, to spend the evening uh, with. So I need to check which order. Actually, it doesn't really matter. Let's do them in some, some order. Uh, so um, let's start with this one, the uh, best blog. So let's go in there um all oh, right so let's just set the status right so let's look at this challenge we have the best blog and we do look at the challenge uh, information without looking at the flag. So we have uh, someone say, saying that they, they built a super nice blog. Uh, check it out. And we get access to a website uh, which we can connect to no downloadable, downloadable files. So we are just going to start this Docker container containing the uh, uh, the challenge so that we can connect to it. So, so this is something you can do as well if you check out the challenges. Um, so just need to download some. Uh, I, I think I cleaned out my Docker cache recently. Uh, so I had to download some uh, base image there and just building this, um, building this Docker image and uh, running it soon so this should be um fairly quick hopefully uh, and if you have any uh, any questions or you know suggestions on techniques or whatever you want uh please write it in chat or like if you have questions about um i mean it doesn't have to be necessarily about this challenge uh, or so if you have uh broader uh broader uh questions Let's see, I think I can increase the gain a bit on this. Let's see if, if I, do you hear me a bit better now? Maybe, yeah, okay. Uh, looks, looks okay. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, this is taking a little bit of time. Uh, 
we can prepare ourselves to be able to go to this uh, website. Uh, um, so, it's like a whole. Um, yeah, so maybe while it's running, we can, <clears throat> okay, now, now maybe it's all, almost, almost done. Okay, now it should be up and running. So what was the, what was the information we would give it again? Should be this port 888 or no? It's listening on. Um, oh, that's now I have to check the Docker Compose. Oh, right, uh, fifty thousand was the port we had for all the challenges. <clears throat> okay. So it's a question: if there's going is the if there will be a stream for the Midnight Sun qualifiers challenges? Probably not. Um, not at, at least not all of them, but maybe if there's like specific ones that you're interested in. Like I wasn't very involved in uh, Midnight Sun uh, in the qualifiers, so I don't know too much about the challenges. And uh, I heard, unfortunately, there were like quite varying quality. Like there were some really good challenges, but also some not so great uh, challenges. So. Uh, I don't know. Also, I'm like I'm trying to solve another challenge um, right now, which has like a deadline fairly soon. Uh, so I'm spending a lot of time on that. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll see. But anyway, here is the blog post, and it's it looks absolutely horrible. But it says like my blog. Click here to go to the first page. Check this blog post. It's like you can go back and there's another post and note here that we have this um, ID here. So yeah, these are the, the pages you can go to. So like, um, what are we looking here? What, what, what would be things to look for? So for example, uh, one thing we could uh, look at, yes, there's a cat. Uh, and uh, something we could try uh, is uh, manipulating this ID somehow. Like, we, do we have a zero? What happens if we do like minus one? Maybe like A. It seems like we end up at. It's like not the proper blog post at all. We still have this image here, but we we're missing the text from from the post. Um, so it's a little bit unclear. So um, this could be, uh, I guess, we could try to look at um, if this is a um, SQL injection here in this. Uh, uh, ID and uh, how could we try that? So let's um, bring up some uh, notes here. <clears throat> so there, there are like automated tools you could do this with, and I'm gonna show that as well. But since this is like a fairly basic challenge, <clears throat> I would just want to show like. What's going on here? So we're just going to guess that what the server is doing is something like select from posts where ID is and then like the ID here. Um, so how, I mean, we're not getting in like any error messages or anything back when, when we put 
other IDs or like invalid stuff here. So we can't use that, but let's try to see if we could just uh, identify a injection by doing something like uh, if ID is this, or I think we can do like something like this. Uh, and then we would have to do like comment out stuff like this. So we could try this. Also, of course, this could be single quotes. So we have to try both combinations. By the way, is the um, uh, SQL sleep function, is it like seconds or milliseconds? It's, is it? Um, Oh, let, let's just try it. So we put this here. Nothing seemed to happen. Nothing seemed to happen there either. Um, let's see. Can you even do this? It was like... Oh, that's uh, spoilers. We're getting uh, like SQL output uh, on the uh, on the back end here, so let's let's not look at that. Um, I just want to try direct. Right, that that's the proper uh, syntax. So we try this can. Hmm. Still not producing anything. Uh, because like the behavior we want is that it should take like five seconds for this page uh, to load. That would indicate that we have a uh, SQL injection here. Um, but we're not getting this uh, behavior. So I mean, you could go directly to trying like an automated solution, but it would have been nice to just try this to show how you can explore this uh, manually. But yeah, let's let's uh, let's uh, do this instead. So there's this tool uh, called uh, SQL Map, which is pretty powerful, um, and it can handle a lot of different like SQL injections and stuff on its own. And let me actually, let me do like this so that my camera is not in the way. Uh, so what we do is <clears throat> we give it the uh, URL here and we just set an ID here and it will hopefully figure out uh, all right, wait, I already had some cached stuff for this. I need to, I, I was like, I've been trying this challenge at some point before. Uh, so I need to like, uh, just flush the, yes. So there's this command to just like, okay. So now it's doing this again. Um, so here it's testing and it's saying that this, uh, the get parameter ID, uh, might be injectable and it appears to be and Boolean based blind, uh, injectable. And it looks like the backend is Postgres. And do you want to skip, uh, trying for other databases? So let's yes, let's skip that. And do you want to include all tests for this backend? Yes, sure. And now it's performing a bunch of queries uh, against it to try to like exploit this uh, SQL injection. And it says that it is injectable. Do you want to keep uh, looking for other stuff? And with that, we do no. Uh, so now um, we have a confirmed injection and now we can add a dash dash dump to try to dump the uh, database and we get 
a, a flag. So let's just compare this to the correct flag. And it is indeed, oh no, you found my secret. Uh, so that is a simple like SQL action. So this, this, this is basically showing that, uh, you know, the, the classic like very first SQL action challenge you typically, typically do would be like a login form or a search form or something. But this is kind of showing that you can have SQL injection in other like any input, it could be like a query parameter, uh, it could be in a header, like there's a bunch of different places where you could have a, uh, a SQL uh, injection. So yeah, that was the best blog challenge. Um, but let's move on to uh, next web. We can do this. My uh, my first PHP project, or actually, let's do this uh, XSS one uh, first. I think that's one that one is easier. Uh, so let me just so what do we have here same thing we're given a docker container no uh, no downloadable challenges and the description is check my xss challenge it has nice animations so let's start that website build the image Uh, there's a question if I completed all the rev challenges. Yes. So in the in the first uh, stream, I did all the reversing uh, challenges. So if you look in my channel, uh, there's a part one uh, to this stream where I did all the reversing challenges. So you can go back there and there is like a table of contents in the description if you want to skip to a specific uh, challenge uh, as well. Because that, was, that stream was like five hours uh, or something. Uh, this one is not going to be five hours. Uh, for sure. So yeah, it's building this Docker. There's a lot of Docker image building going on for these web challenges, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, famous last word. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm I'm pro I'm really gonna hate myself if I stay up too late when I'm gonna try to work tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, it seems like seems like a very poor idea. I mean. I've made that mistake a lot of times and it's probably going to happen again, but, but not today, not today. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we have a container up and running very soon. What I could do actually is like go ahead and start building uh, the next one in the meantime as well while we're solving uh, this challenge. Like do some prep work. So yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so I mean unfortunately not that much I can talk about while this is this is going on, I guess. But uh so, so what what I do what I can say is like so the, the, the previous challenge we did was like something where we exploited uh, the the server, like like a SQL injection, we attacked the backend, but now we're doing a uh, an XSS challenge where um where we are supposed to attack another user of the website in this case it's like a a, a bot or like a made up uh, user but this is something you could then use to like attack another person uh using the website um yeah who needs a tiling window manager when you have terminator yeah i mean like this is like maybe not maybe not the best setup in the world, but you know I'm trying to uh, trying to get something going. Okay, it seems like it's up and running, so we should be able to close down these things. 
And if we go to localhost 50,000, we have now a completely different uh, web page. Also, a question like, do you have a fixed time for streams? Uh, unfortunately, not. Uh, I've been I've been thinking about like having like a regular thing, maybe like every other week or something. But uh, unfortunately, that hasn't really happened. But um, yeah, um, there is some kind of uh, ambition there. Yes, this time there's a dog, not a cat. So you know, we have something for all all types here. Um, so, okay, so this is like, basically it says that here is the challenge and once you have created, uh, managed to exploit it, you submit the link here, um, to kind of like have the bot go visit this link and, and get exploited. So here we have this hello challenge. It's an XSS here. It says ABC. We have an ABC query parameter here. So we can like, if we type something in here, it gets reflected back here. And then it says something about animations and there's a button. Oh, that's also a detail. I think, I don't remember. Yeah, we will, we will get to that. Uh, so let's click this button. Oh, there's a box and it is animated. Wow. Um, so let's look at the source code for this challenge. We have some CSS that's probably not interesting. Um, and here is our stuff printed out. And then, uh, this is the, uh, here's the animation button. And when you, uh, click it, it calls this function with this parameter undefined, which calls this function, which does a bunch of things. And then here we have, don't forget to remove debug stuff. Oh no, like what a mistake. Uh, there's some debug stuff here. So it says like debug equals red. So we'll try that. And there's also slash source. That's interesting. So first of all, let's open a new tab and do slash source, preferably with the correct spelling. So here we have the source code. That's probably going to be interesting. And then uh, we also have this debug equals red. What happens when we do that? So, oh, that changes the color here of the argument in the animation. I should probably increase the font size a bit. Um, yeah, please, uh, please like call it, call me out when like, if there's, if the text is too small or anything, uh, it's, I, I sometimes forget between all these different programs to, to increase it. <clears throat> anyway, uh, this debug parameter, it gets echoed back here. That's interesting. So let's, uh, see if things are escaped. So for the hello, let's just try like a script tag like this and that doesn't work. It gets like, it, um, escaped. We can also check in the source code. We should probably see that behavior here. So let's see. This is related to the bot, so we don't care about that. But here, yes, uh, get slash chal. This is the handler for the, the challenge page. So it will, let's see, it will here. If XSS is not undefined, then replace uh, curly brackets with nothing and then call escape HTML on it. And then we have debug, same thing with curly brackets, but then they do escape HTML and then escape JS on top of that. So there's, there's like different escaping, uh, going on between these two. So we need like, we should test both of them. And here is like exactly what's going on, but you know, let's, uh, let's not dig too deep in there yet. Um, uh, because we can start by trying just different things. So basically what we can do is just, <clears throat> uh, um, look for like when we run this normally we have no errors here 
So if we manage to inject something that's just not just treated as content, but also like managed like be treated as code or something, we would probably get some like error here or something. So that's a good place to start. So for example, if we try to inject like a single quote in both of these, um, well, preferably in the value and not in the name. So this gets escaped and here's like red uh, single quote. Oh, that's interesting. Like when we click the button, can I increase the size? Yes. So here we get a, a JavaScript error, like uh, missing uh, parentheses of the argument list. So let's look at that in the code. So what's happening here? This looks completely fine. Hmm. Why is this if we look? Uh, all right, so this, oh yeah, yeah this is the, the like unintuitive thing. So this uh, here gets interpreted by um, the HTML parser uh, first, and then that's passed into uh, the JavaScript. So what we have here is evaluated as um, like sing, this is this is actually interpreted as a single quote. Will you be checking out DefCon Qual CTF? Yes. So, uh, we are playing the DefCon qualifiers with uh, our big Scandinavian collaboration team, uh, Norse Code. So we started this team uh, last year. Um. We have a few more teams now here, actually. It's, it, there's a few missing. So uh, following this trend of like big national collaboration team for DEF CON. So there was like, you know, uh, Sour Cloud from Germany and Hackeroni from Italy and so on. So last year we put together this uh, like Scandinavian um, team uh, and we played the DEF CON qualifiers last year um, and qualified and played in the finals. And now we're doing this uh, this year again. So uh, the DEF CON qualifiers, for, the, for those who don't know, they are this weekend, this coming weekend. And uh, yeah. Um, Fenno Scandian. Wait, what does Fenno mean? Uh, Norway is Scandinavia. Uh, so, you typically count like uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland, and Iceland. Uh, well, no, let's see. Finland, Finland is not part of Scandinavia, but Finland is part of the Nordics. So that's that's the. Uh, uh, Tricky thing. Yeah, so Finland is part of the Nordic countries, but not Scandinavia. Yeah, so, but we have no Finnish teams. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, so yes, we are competing and we have a decent chance, I think. Both like, there are like several teams here who are like uh, highly ranked on the CTF time rankings at the moment. Uh, both, uh, we from from hacking for soju and bootplug and Kalmar Newnan. Uh this is like a this is like a new new team from Denmark and they have been like crushing it in the past year. They were they were created just like last year or something. So um yeah, they're pretty pretty good. But anyway, more about that later or something. Uh let's get back to the challenge. Um <clears throat> so we are getting some some uh, JavaScript error here. So uh this means that this is kind of like unintuitive. What's actually happening is more like this. <clears throat> so if we try to run this in the console, <clears throat> we get the same um, same error. So this is what's happening. So what we would do instead, so the goal of the challenge is to just pop a uh, alert. So we want to 
do we could do something like this for example <clears throat> that would be possible um so this means that we have to inject this part uh so this is our uh, uh injection uh, payload and here you also have to be careful because if you put this just like this it will not work because a plus in a url is like url encoding that's uh, a space so we have to uh, encode these uh, plus signs so <clears throat> We look in the uh, table and we see that a plus is 2B. So we replace this with percent 2B and this one with percent 2B. Um, <clears throat> and we run this and we click the button and we get an alert one. So this seems to be a solution to the challenge. So let's try to submit it. Uh, or maybe it's just the, oh, it's just the path. And we wait. Uh, yes. Great success. Uh, but my animations were so beautiful. Yes, but they were also vulnerable to XSS. So let's check that. Um, yes, that's correct. So there we have a solution for that one. Um, so let's move on to the my first php project which we now have rebuilt the container for and let's keep up with that so let's go on to the secret club for example and start building that one as well while we solve this so we have what's this called my first PHP project. Oh God. Could you rate each challenge you saw on the standard one to 500 CTF? Yes, uh, absolutely. So, I mean, both of these web challenges are like uh, 100. That's like, they are like entry level uh, challenges. So we had point values for these challenges in the, in this qualifier, but we had like a uh, skewed scale because of course we're not going to have any like 500 point challenges for like the high school uh, students uh, that would be um, kind of cruel so the, the 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 scale we had was like um, like rescaled where like a 500 point challenge in this competition was maybe more like a 300 or 250 point challenge in a regular CTF um, although this is like sometimes very difficult to to say, but, um, yeah, so, so far these are like, these are like entry level, uh, challenges. So good for, very good for beginners. So let's look at, let's first of all, let's close all of these things and then let's look at the challenge description. Um, so my. Uh, my first PHP project, I made a website for sharing images and notes with my friends. I ensured that there aren't any security issues by completely testing the image upload functionality before creating the note upload functionality and testing it too. Very responsible of you. Um, and we have a container as well. So let's go to this website. <clears throat> Welcome to my first PHP project. Use this website to share notes and images with friends. Uploads are cleared every 15 minutes. Uh, it's a good way to like not like have your web server be completely bogged down during a CTF by random uploads. So let's check home, nothing. Notes. Um, we have some notes here. Available notes, content of welcome. Interesting. Um, we can see here that we have a, like a path to the, uh, like a file name in the parameter. So that's some good, um, things to notice. And here we have an image upload feature. Okay. So let's look at these uh, one at a time. So first of all, what you always want to try, like if you have something like this, where you can like view a file through, 
a uh, page like this is to try something like like a local file inclusion. Okay, so here you can see we tried uh, adding slashes here, and it seems like they are filtering out uh, the slashes. So that's uh, that's unfortunate. Um, first of all, let's see what the source here looks like. Okay, so available notes. So let's submit the note. Note one. Hello. Okay, it's interesting. So another thing, of course, we can try is like uh, template injection stuff. And it seems to be filtering out stuff here as well. Um, yeah, since like, even though I submitted like curly brackets and multiplication stuff, it just, uh, it just kept just the numbers. So that like, that's like a bit, um, interesting. Let's input a few like special characters or something. Uh. Right, it seems to be filtering out like a whole bunch of, whole bunch of stuff. Um, so can we have dots in the name? So that works, but that doesn't like we still we still can't have like dot dot slash because they're filtering out like the slashes. Um, so. It at the moment it looks like we are constrained to this uh directory. Could we do like um or notes.ph um yeah so it doesn't look like it. Um so what about what about the images, the image uploader? So you can upload an image and share the obtained URL with some friends. How fun. Uh, uh, please upload a file. Um, yes. So um, we need to, first of all, we need to create like a small we need like a small test image. We can just upload some. Let's get a picture. Uh, this one. Except they have, can I just like save image as and like download this. Um, cat.jpg. So let's upload, let's upload this cat image. All right, so here we have. The file has been uploaded and you can share it with your friends with this. That's interesting. Uh, so here we have a file name. How is this then? How is the image included in the page? Um, oh, just like the data is included directly as a data URL. Um, so let's try similar things here, right? So if we do slash etc password, um, and doesn't look like it's working.
that is unfortunate. So what about checking if these images like are on the same directory as the notes? So what if we do like note one dot txt? Um, that seems to work. Let's just confirm it by decoding, well, coding this. Yes. Okay. So what we have so far is that the images and the notes, they are, uh, in the same directory, it seems. So. Uh, that's of course interesting. And hmm. what if we, this means we could do it the other way, right? We could have the cat thing here and what happened like the page just broke so that's interesting so what if we upload an image and the image has php code in it and we hope that these files are like included as PHP scripts and not just like read and output. That's that's like a starting uh, point. Um, I just want to create like a small. Um, we can use uh, like image magic and convert to just create like a small. Uh, dummy image. So we have this uh, white uh, PNG file. And now if we, oh, if we open the uh, PNG file, um, Hmm, starting to get tired. Uh, yes, if we open the PNG file in this hex editor, so I use uh, 010 editor, uh, which is uh, a really nice uh, hex editor. Uh, very, very nice. Um, you can have these nice templates that like parse the file format and, and so on. So let's open this small image like this, and we have this PNG image, uh, but we don't worry about that too much. We can just add like PHP uh, echo like hello like this. Now we can save as like white payload. So let's try this. Only JPEG or PNG files are allowed. Okay, so they're doing some kind of verification on the file. So maybe we could then, I, I just appended the data at the end. So maybe we could hide it in like a comment uh, or something. So we can use um, EXIF tool uh, to Right, this is how you want to do it. So there's this tool called Exif tool, um, which you can use to display information about challenge and like Exif data and stuff. So we could probably add um, a comment. I think you can do it like this. Uh, is this? Uh, 
Oh, it doesn't need to be like capital C. Oh, is it like you need to set an equal sign? Okay, that's how you do it. Uh, what is the tool name that you use for hex edit? Yeah, it's called zero one zero editor. Um, uh, it's a, a, a absolutely great tool, and it's available on like all mainstream uh, platforms and. It has this nice feature that you can use it to like parse file format, so you get like a structured view like this of of the PNG format. They have like a uh, um, like a gallery of file formats, but then of course you can also create your own uh, file format par parsers in this and and get something like this and use it to like parse and modify file formats. Um, super nice, and it has a yeah a bunch of different convenient features you can do things like this like parsing numbers and or like parsing bytes of different type of data types and so on uh, a lot of like nice search features and so on so yeah I, I i really have been using it for like over five years or something and i really like it anyway uh we made a mistake because our white payload thing was all already like um corrupted by but by what i did before um does it do out to file carving. Uh, no. So you would have to, like, it assumes that you're, well, unless the file format parser um, has, like, support for this, it will assume that your file format start from, starts from the, um, like, the first byte. So if you have, a, so you would typically need to combine it with something like bin walk or uh, something to, um to like extract files and then like parse them. Uh anyway, uh let's uh let's fir let's first copy this uh plain white pixel uh image again. Payload two and then we use exif tool to set the comment to some um some PHP code. And now we have a valid. We have a valid PNG file with some PHP code in its comment. So we should be able to upload this one. Uh, okay. Wait. Okay, so there's something going on here because we can upload the original like white.png but not our modified one. Uh, let's try some things like let's see what they are looking for. If we start just like this. Hmm. How would that work? They can't be. What if we have just a less than sign here? That doesn't work. What if we do like this? Wait, can we have a comment at all? Okay, let's try with a JPEG file instead. Maybe there's something wrong, like something wrong with the uh, uh, with the PNG parser. So, I put payload.jpg and then. Uh, exif tool set hello. We can run this in exif tool, and we have JPEG file 
have this comment. Why? So if we do the plain JPEG file, it works. Hmm. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So it doesn't seem to like if we have like a comment uh, in this one. Um, it, like it, it, it doesn't like if we have a comment in the picture. Uh, could we do like if we remove the comment? Could we do something else? First of all, can we upload this one? Wait. Now it says we can't upload this. Is like is EXIF tool like ruining the file somehow? Um, let's open this and let's open the. Re Wait, hold up. Wait, maybe it's the name. Yeah. Okay. So, because now I uploaded like two identical, um, oh, that's actually interesting. So what's happening is that when we upload white.jpg, it's fine. But when we upload white.payload.jpg, uh, it's not fine. So maybe it's just checking the like file. Um, so so what if we change it to um, white.payload? Uh, if we change it around to like white.jpg.payload and upload this. All right, that works. Oh, maybe then we don't need to. What if they don't change check the picture at all? What if we could just do, like, payload dot jpeg dot dot php. So what if we do this? Um, and we upload this. So we put uh, PHP code in a file, the text file, we call it payload.jpg.php and we upload it and that works. So what if we now take this file name and we go back to the, first of all, we close all of these ones and we, right, so this is working, okay. Uh, let's do another one instead. Let's do uh, eval get uh, C. So instead of having to like um, modify this file, upload it, and so on, we upload a small piece of code that, and then we can just provide pieces of code in the in the browser to make it less tedious. So we upload this. We go here. We go here and then we add C equals like, um, echo one, two, three, uh, and that works. So then we could do echo or like system LS and uh we can now in insert insert command so what's happening is that this parameter uh c which has contains this string system 
uh, Ellis is then passed into here, and this is eval, and like the system function in PHP will just run like it's as a uh, uh, like a shell command. So we now <clears throat> have a small mini shell in here. So let's look in like constant dot constants dot PHP could be where you store a flag. Cat constants dot PHP. Hmm. It doesn't work. So the PHP code evals PHP code. Uh, but we are the PHP code we are sending is a call to the system function, which in turn will do just a like a shell uh, command like this, like ls or id. We even get like, well, let's do like this, and we get a nice. So we will have all of these, but why? is oh right of course it's not it's the the php uh it was not being rendered uh because the php uh tag here gets interpreted as an html tag so it's not rendered so that's why we should use this view source thing so it was not in the constants uh just oh by the way we should also just check like the root of the file system Oh yeah, okay. There we have a flag.txt. So we can then do cat slash flag. Uh, all of your PHP are belong to us. So yeah, that's uh, um, that's how you solve this. So basically, yes, cat. Um. There's like another, uh, someone made like a, a joke command line tool called uh, TAC, uh, which, uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it's supposed to print the file backwards. That's the, well, it's maybe it's like line by line. So, yes. Tag is, I mean, yes, of course, this is absolutely very serious command line tool. So you see it cats uh, line by line starting from the bottom uh, one. All right, so this was the, uh, um, this was this challenge, the uh, my, my first PHP uh, project. Um, Incidentally, how would you implement that? It's a good programming quiz question. Yes, it's uh, uh, actually a kind of interesting problem to, to think about. Um, yes. Uh, let's close down things here and uh, move on to the next challenge so we have the secret club and avoid handshakes left i'm not sure this one is still up and running we'll see this one was a sponsor challenge so they hosted it themselves uh i think so uh or maybe they didn't we'll see we'll we'll, we'll leave it for last and and we'll check but let's do a uh, secret club uh in the meantime uh, which we already pre-built, so it's starting up. Yes, good. Slide this to the side. And this time again, we don't get any downloadable files. Uh, oh, again, also for rating, this would still, yeah, I think this still would be like a hundred, maybe, I mean, today's, this is also like a, a thing with like CTF challenges. like. As the uh, as CTF progresses, uh, things that like challenges that was they were like once considered difficult becomes like common knowledge. Um, 
But yeah, like 150, I would say as well, because it's not like it's not like you open it and you just know the solution. Uh, but I mean, it's definitely uh, an easy one. But it, it, it's like different. Like uh, so, so yeah, things things are considered easier over time because uh, like things more and more things become like common knowledge and part of like this like standard like curriculum of, of like things uh, you know. So like the, the the kind of like frontier gets pushed and also like the tools get better and better. Um so um it's uh yeah. That that it that kind of evolves over time. But yeah, like hundred or hundred and fifty or something. It's like just above that those like uh very uh easy challenges. Let's go to this one. Ooh, the secret club. Oh, right. This was the uh, first... Oh, by the way, I should open... Uh, update the uh, status. The secret club. Uh, this was the first uh, web challenge, I remember now. So, the secret club. We need a password. It's incorrect. Okay. What if we look at the page source? Oh, they call a check pass function when you click. The script. Oh, and here you have a flag. So if the password is this, we get re redirected. Let's try it. Welcome member to the Vexiology Club. Some nice flags in here. Wait a second. What's this? The USB. Um, yeah, so that was like that was like the the, the very very easy uh, web challenge that we had uh, at like the very beginning of of the competition. Um, yeah, I mean it's not really much more to it than that. Like it's just about like reading uh, the source code and understanding that this is the flag. So this is like you know the very first like web uh, like web challenge you would encounter. Uh, all right, so let's check the uh, avoid handshake thing. Let's see if it is. Okay, uh, okay, so there's still something here, I guess. So this challenge is probably still up. Yeah, it's a good intro challenge. Like it's there's like there's no um no bullshit. Like it's it's just to, to, to get you to like you know start understanding what, what different components there are to like a website. <clears throat> so um yes, I think we can do this. I think it, it seemed like it was still up. So this was from our main sponsor of the competition. Uh, a center, which is like a security consultancy firm here in Stockholm. Um, and here is just a note that you should use a lowercase for for the flag format. I guess there was like a slight miscommunication with the sponsor when they created the challenge. Um, and then the only thing you're given is this uh, URL. But as you see, if we try to go to this in our browser, it's saying like this site can't be reached. Uh, so what's up with that? Let's uh, check first, like resolve this. Oh, by the way, I should set the status again. Oh, you, you think it's down. Okay, yeah, then that's unfortunate in that case. Uh, maybe we can't do it. Let's let's confirm this. Oh, this should be... Yeah, that's true. This should be like the, the landing page with the description, right? Yeah, uh, that's true. So I will not be able to do this challenge. I think the, uh, the person who made it talked about like hosting it again. But either way, uh, as part of so so there there is a way you can uh, 
if you're interested in this challenge, when we had the competition, um, at the end of the competition, we did a, a like a closing ceremony where we also had some uh, like some information you know uh showing scoreboard and and so on and like some presentations from the sponsors uh so part of that was that the sponsor they made a video uh with basically like a, a walk through like this uh, of the challenge so if you go to uh code sports uh youtube um page although i just remember that this is in swedish actually so that's all also only relevant for swedish uh viewers anyway you might be able to follow without like with just the the, the screen as well anyway so there's there's a a walkthrough of this challenge uh at the end of this uh stream i think it's like yes here so like 20 20 minutes into uh the stream there is uh a walkthrough of this uh in swedish but there's still the screen, and I think it's simple enough that you can follow along. So yeah, I will not be able to do it uh, on stream. And this means that we have gone through all of the web challenges. So I did the inter challenges as well in the in the previous one, I think. So let's see, like look in my notes. All the forensics, all the reversing, all the web. So yeah, is it crypto time? Is it crypto time? Like there are two options here. We could do some well, there are three options, I guess. There is some miscellaneous things, there is some pwn, there is some crypto. AVR when? Well, there, there we already had AVR. Uh with the in the reversing so uh and there's unfortunately no avr in, in the in the pwn uh section uh but uh yeah um yeah i mean avr pain it's like uh it's a special it's an acquired taste i guess um but uh, yeah actually let's do this one I think, uh, and then maybe that we can like close out the stream with that. This because this is kind of, kind of a nice uh, problem. So, so we have a tradition when hosting this uh, competition uh, where we create like uh, posters to like advertise the competition which we um send out to uh, schools so that they can like put these posters up in school to like um get people to participate uh, in the challenge and uh to kind of like get people hooked and curious about this we have a problem directly on the poster already before the competition starts so um like you can think about this uh, problem and solve it and when the competition starts you can actually submit this flag um and, and then get some points uh, immediately so this is a way to like you know get people curious about this competition and uh yeah so this is the poster uh, the poster problem that we have and in this case you only get the uh poster for for the competition so let's open the poster. So this is the poster that we like send out to schools and stuff. And uh, it, it's like some description about the competition. And then uh, it says like, uh, solve the first problem already today. And it says like, how, how like, in what state should the uh, buttons be for uh, the light to uh, be on? 
is this technically a very long challenge? I mean, yes. I mean, it's not not a very long challenge, but in this case, it's going to be a, a, a C3 ch challenge. So let's look at this problem. We have a, a bunch of buttons here. Uh, yeah, it's a question. Pony race when? Yeah, um, I don't know. I like. I want to do pony racing again, uh, and a lot of people are asking about it. But it's like it's a quite a lot of work, and it's also very very difficult to find participants. It turns out that the like intersection of people who are somewhat decent at ponables and who are comfortable being like on a live stream while doing the pon poning is like a very very small group of people apparently. Um, so yeah, but I mean like there is an ambition that it will happen, but I don't know when. So for those who don't know what I'm talking about, pony racing uh, is or was a show that uh, I used to run here on this channel uh, throughout 2019, uh, like a monthly uh, live CTF race show where we had participants uh, like solving uh, ponable challenges and trying to be the first one to solve it before the other participants while um, my co-commentator uh, Bob and I provided uh, my commentary and we, we described what they were doing and, and, and so on. Um, so yeah, there, there's an ambition to, to get it going again, but I don't know when. Um, so maybe once I actually manage to move to uh, Zurich and like be be at the like Google office, uh, maybe I can start like uh, bothering all my colleagues and recruit them for for episodes and stuff, I don't know. Uh, or use the, the CTF Discord uh, to try to recruit people. Although that wasn't super successful the last times I've tried, but uh, I will try again, try to get people uh, you know, interested in participating in this. Um, yeah, I, I miss it as well, so it, it's cool. But anyway, the problem, we have eight buttons here and we have a a network and uh, we have a network of uh, uh, switches and like uh, and logic gates yes and uh, you yes uh, q3k yes i will uh, i will be uh, bothering you at some point at some point and i mean you you can do ponables i know that like don't don't try to pretend you can't. Uh, yeah, so there's a bunch of different ways we could solve this challenge, right? Uh, so we have eight buttons, uh, eight bits. That means, as uh, Matthias pointed out, 256 states. That is, of course, small enough that we could just brute force it. We could just try all combinations and uh, try which one will get the, uh, the light to shine. Um, but that's also not a super, uh, interesting solution, I think, or maybe it is, um, we could actually, we could actually do them both kind of in the same, like at the same time in a sense. Uh, so I guess like, uh, let's, let's try to just like implement this in code <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, we can actually start, we implement this in code. We, um, we do the brute force uh, solution, and then we show how we could have done it if this was more complicated. So that's a good uh, strategy. So <clears throat> yeah, so let's see. We will create this uh, basically function to evaluate we will basically implement this network uh, as a function and we give it like an input state and we will we'll evaluate this. So um, this is like network and the input is buttons. So this, this will be a list of, uh, of the bits. Okay, so now we get to the like kind of tedious um thing of like translating this 
into code. So we will number these from like, this is index zero and this is index uh, seven. Um, so uh, we will try to like build this in code and try to keep track of this. Is there like a uh, tool here? It would have been nice if this like PDF reader had like, like an annotation like pencil or something. I guess I could open it in like. Uh, anyway, let's not. Let's just try to keep this. You can you can point out if I make mistakes. So let's start with. Uh, yeah. So you just uh, John, what did you miss? Yeah, I've been solving a bunch of web challenges, uh, and I'm just finishing up by doing this one of these uh, miscellaneous challenges, and this will be the last challenge for for tonight. Um, and then uh, uh, I'll do. Uh, Probably the rest of the challenges I think should fit into like a third, a third session. That shouldn't be an issue. Um, but yeah, so let's try to implement this. Uh, we have an OR gate here, which is uh, these two. So we have number zero and number two, and we call these. We let's let's assign variables to these and call these like wires. So this is like, uh, I mean these wires here they are named after their input but this one will be like wire one and so wire one the signal here will be the or of these two so um let's do this we do like wire one is buttons actually uh let's do this Let's the type. There will be a lot of typing here. So this will be the or of um, hmm, can't I? Or I guess maybe I have to do this in Python. So so these two, and then it goes into a not gate. So let's call this wire two. So wire two is simply not of uh, wire two is not wire one. And then let's jump up to this one. So this is a uh, wire three and it's the and of button one and seven. Okay, and then let's do let's do like left to right, bottom to top. So let's do this OR gate. So this is wire four, which is button zero, one, two, three, and four. Wire four is B, what did I say? Uh, three and four. Uh, four. And wire five, let's call this one wire five. Wait, can you do, can you do an XOR in Python with Booleans? Can you just, true. X or all right, okay, that works fine. You can just use the normal XOR uh, operator. So where were we? Uh, wire five is XOR of wire two and wire three. Wire two XOR wire three. So now we are about here, and then. we get here. So this is wire six and it's the or of one, two, three, the four and the last one we did five. So wire six is or of four uh, and uh, four and five. 
yeah, so we have a solution by hand. Uh, that might be the correct solution. Um, so yeah, of course, like you can you can play this as kind of like a logic puzzle and just you know reason about uh, like things. So for example, I can something that you can immediately see is that since this is an AND gate here, both these wires needs to be one. So this wire needs to be one and it goes back here. So button at index six needs to be turned on. So that's you can do that kind of reasoning throughout this. But what we're doing now, it will be useful for more complex uh, structures. So this is not really about uh, the solution. Like it's not about the answer here. It's about like the method. Uh, like obviously this is not the most efficient way like you could probably be much faster if you just like oh uh, you know took like a i don't know pencil and paper and worked it out or just doing it ahead yeah so uh where were we we just did an or of four and five which is six here so wire seven here uh will be button at index five Uh, and this wire here, which was uh, one, two, three, wire three, and we can like sanity check here that wire three is used in two places. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, so wire eight is, uh, yes. Uh, so we have suggestions on doing it in Minecraft. Yes, you could implement it in Minecraft. Uh, or using like formal methods and Yosis. Uh, you can kind of combine these two, uh, well, not formal methods, but so in, not in Minecraft, but in MindTest. So there was a Google CTF challenge with, so one of my colleagues, he has built a, uh, what it was called like place and routing, uh, thing for mind test. So you can take very long code, run it through um, like Joseph's and then this like mind test PNR to like synthesize the circuit inside of uh, mind test. Uh, yeah, I guess the same can be done for like uh, Factorio and this is probably like a handful of games where you can uh, implement this. Um, yes, where were we? The AND here, so we're doing this one now, wire 8. And wire 8 is the AND of 6 and 7. And then we have wire 9. Wire 9 is the XOR of wire seven and this button at index six. And now we can, no, we can't, but in the end, we know that this button will be used in two places. So we can double check that. Wire 10 will be the or of the last two wires we did, wire nine or wire eight. Um, and then we have another one, wire 11, which is just the knot of wire 10. And then we have this wire here, the final wire, 12, which is the AND of wire 11 and the button at index 6. And then we return the state of wire 12. Okay, so now we have a function here. And we let's let's uh, first let's do the brute force approach. So for a candidate value in range 256. Uh, so before we try all, we get all the 256 different uh, possible uh, solutions. And then we uh, get 
the um, bits. So we take uh, for each uh, possible um, value for each input, we need one byte, so like eight bits. So we go from zero to 255. Um, and uh, uh, we extract the bits. So we do a list comprehension here and we like shift down and and to get like all the bits uh, uh, out. Um, we need to be a bit careful here about like the order. So this means that like uh, the, the, the first value, well, not the first value, that will be zero. That's uh, like symmetric, but the, the second value one, it, we will have one in the first position because this will take the least significant bit uh, first in the list. So we will have one here and then uh, and then seven zero. So we need to keep this in mind when like interpreting the uh, solution. So let's uh, just let's just print this um, and then I'll just print the first three. right. Uh, or four. So this makes sense. We get like the bits uh, counting upwards. And uh, yeah, Q to Q, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, the, the idea is to like, you know, get people to like see the, uh, see the poster when they're on, on break or whatever. And then like, you know, not really being able to let it go until they have solved it. And then hopefully be interested enough. Uh, so why do you call it candidate values? So yeah, it's, uh, it's just because it's a candidate to be the correct solution. Like I, I'm trying to be like specific here. Like if I would just call it like, I mean, in this case, it's like simple enough. There's only really one value to care about. But for example, I mean, in, in this case, it's not a big deal because when we find the solution, we know that we found the solution. But let's say you're in a situation where you're searching for the best value for some kind of target function. So you maybe you keep track of like, maybe you have like a uh, best value uh, as well. And then you have a candidate value and maybe you have a uh, previous value as well. So it's just like to qualifying these names to, to like be more specific what they are indicating. Um, so, so it's a, it's a candidate for being uh, the solution. Uh, it's uh, a possible solution, but we don't know yet whether, you know, it is a good solution or not. Um, so we get rid of this, get rid of that. And now let's see if we call this. So uh, this should like evaluate this whole thing. And let's actually just, there are a few enough of them to just print the value and the result. So we see here, we have one true. Uh, okay, the data types are, I guess we should actually do, actually get them to Booleans by doing like, And you do yeah that's nicer so i mean it doesn't really matter if it's like zero or false but for like consistency i like converted them all to booleans and we see here that the only possible solution and by the way we should also of course uh print those candidate bits actually we should not uh print the candidate bits. So we should do this. We should not convert them to bools right away. We should do um, and then we submit this into the function and then we can print the bits. 
yeah, it's much more readable. So seems to agree very well with the uh, proposed solution from Q3K as well. Uh, so we have this. Uh, let's uh, check the challenge as well. Yes, so that is the correct flag. <clears throat> All right, uh, that was one way of so of solving it, and uh, it works because <clears throat> the number of possible values, like the space of possible values, is quite small. So we can just try them all, and uh, you know, make sure that it's like there is exactly one of them that gives a correct solution. <clears throat> but I want to show a different method, which I think is very nice, and it's to use something called um, C3. Uh, so it's like a theorem prover, a, it's a SMT uh, solver. So what we will do here is that instead of trying all different values, <clears throat> we will create like symbolic, like instead of inputting a specific value and evaluating it in the function and getting like a specific result, we're going to create variables and basically have this uh, system solve it for us. And the very nice thing now is that when we do this in Python, we can reuse this code uh, and just in input uh, these symbolic values here instead of these concrete values that we have been uh, using. So we import the stuff we need from uh, C3. We comment out this whole thing and then we do create a list of our eight uh, variables um what's the uh you have yeah you can have booleans uh in in, in c3 as well so now we create a symbolic Boolean variable, uh, and we assign a name to it so that we know which one is which. So we have this name, which will be like B0, B1, and so on. Uh, so now we can uh, print this list. And we have a list of these symbolic uh, values. So now what we do is we call the function uh, with these symbolic um, inputs. So all of these operations, they are defined for this data type as well. Uh, so uh, or it's not. Uh, that's unfortunate. All right, so we will have to do a slight modification to our code. I really thought that this would work. Can you use the... Oh, maybe you need to use the uh, um, like bitwise operators instead. Would hmm, maybe it is not uh, implemented for for booleans. Yes, let's see. There are like two ways we could go about doing this. Yeah, uh, this is, so I'm trying to, so there are different data types in C3 and uh, there's a Boolean data type. There's also a bit vector so you can use a bit vector of size one. Uh, and I think that's the way to go. Uh, just need, all oh, right, this is the operation we need then, of course. Uh, 
by the way, I just want to prove or like point out that this thing should still be working. Yes. So by the way, let's skip the whole Boolean thing and let's pretend that this is the way I did it instead, that I implemented the code like this with like bitwise operators and then called the function like this, you know, while brute forcing. And that would that would have given us the same result. It's just different data types. So anyway, let's get back to uh, C3. So we create a list of bit vectors with one bit each. So we have these eight elements, which are all one bit each, and then we call the function with it. Sorry, here we have the, the, the symbolic variables, and then we call the function, and instead of getting back a concrete value, we get this expression. So this is like, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, I, I know that you can use the AND and OR functions in C3, but then I would have had to like rewrite the code and kind of like the point with this was to show that you could have used, like once you have implemented the uh, code for and used it for concrete values, you can then just switch the inputs and use it uh, to solve this symbolically. So uh, this is a good, uh, good thing because you for example let's say you're working on a problem and you have like a few examples of inputs and outputs um then you could implement the code and try with these concrete values uh uh like to check that your implementation is correct and then you can switch to symbolic inputs uh to actually solve the problem yeah it's a bit unclear why why they chose to implement some specific operations and so on. But anyway, if you then call it now with <clears throat> the symbolic values as inputs, you get back this expression. So this is kind of like the compressed or like the, the, the evaluated, um, uh, this is like a evaluating the, this whole uh, network of logic on the uh, expression. And this is what you get. So now um, we have a an expression like this, but the expression is scrunched. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is actually a technical term. It sounds more like, you know, a technical term, but uh, I'll, I'll take it. So what we need to do now is to create a solver. And to this solver, we will add constraints. And in this case, the constraint is very simple. The constraint is that this expression should be one. And then we need to solve this. So then we do like this. We call the check function and we check if, so this will return uh, sat for satisfied or unsat for unsatisfied or unsatisfiable, or I think it can also like return like unknown if you have some kind of expression that it can't handle. So if you do like some very like non-linear stuff and <clears throat> I don't know, like it depends on like what it's able to handle. But what we are interested in is is sat. Yes, cat. Uh, so if we, if we are unable to um, satisfy the expression, we'll print that it's unsat and a sad face because that's how you will feel. But uh, if this works, then we will fetch the model from the solver. And the model is like the concrete values, the, the set of values for these different variables that would satisfy um the the uh, constraints and you could just do like print uh, the model but it will print like all the variables in essentially like a random order well i mean it's obviously not random but not in the order you want typically 
Uh, so instead, we're going to like pick out all of the values and create like a nice list. So what we do uh, is that we do a uh, list comprehension over the model and as an index, uh, actually, I will type this out first and then explain it. So what we do here is we take this list of symbolic variables and we loop over it and then we take the symbolic variable as an index into the model to fetch the concrete value that corresponds to this variable. And then we interpret this as a number and we create a list out of this. This way we know that we'll get the bits and the order that we expect them. And then we print the solution. So here's the expression and then we solve for this constraint and then you get this. Actually, what we can do is we can also like print the solver here as well to get. So basically here is the state of the solver and it only contains one constraint. It, the constraint is that this expression should be equal to one and then solves it and it uh, gives you this uh, list of bits, which is uh, the solution. So that's like a super basic way of using uh, C3. Uh, it's like a really, really nice and powerful tool. And I've used it in uh, countless CTF challenges. Um, mostly successfully, sometimes uh, it's not the right tool for the job, but it can be used in a lot of cases. And in a lot of places you can um, like replace like intelligence and skill with a C3 script instead and just let the computer uh, do the work. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, so that will be it for today. Um, yeah, so we did, uh, we did go through all the web challenges and the poster, uh, the poster problem. And yeah, so what we have left is all the crypto stuff and, uh, some other miscellaneous ones and, uh, some of the pwn stuff. So there's some good stuff in there. It is like, uh, I deliberately skipped, like, I think the crypto stuff, because I think this one, I will actually have to, uh, um, do some preparation before, because this one was actually like a little bit, uh, tricky or annoying maybe. And the, the same thing, there's like one of these pones that I probably will have to do a little bit of prep work for the stream to not be super boring. Uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so there's a question, do you play CTF time? What's your team name? Yeah. So I, uh, typically play for the Swedish team hacking for Soju. Uh, this is us. But as I stated previously in the stream, uh, for the DEF CON qualifiers uh, this weekend, we are playing as this uh, big collaborative uh, Scandinavian team, uh, Norse Code. So for example, uh, Matthias, who's in the chat, is uh, part of team whatever. Uh, they are participating in this. And uh, yeah, so we're a bunch of Swedish teams and Norwegian team and Danish team and like a like Swedish Danish uh, team, um, so so we're playing together for the DevCon. Yeah, where is so Q three K is part of Dragon Sector. Uh, where? What? Where is Dragon Sector? 
79. This is so so just for context for people who are not aware, like Dragon Sector is probably like one of the like through the I mean not super long history of CTFs, like Dragon Sector is probably like one of the top three like all time teams. Like if we look here through the history, we have like, you know, third place. First place, second place, second place, fourth place, first place, first place, tenth place. Oh no, outside the top four, and then currently at seventy ninth place. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. Um, yeah, how many people we have in Norse code? Yeah, <laughs> uh, we have quite a lot of people. So. Norse code is like a combined, it's like a kind of like a community, like a Scandinavian CTF community and a team. But the number of people who have signed up for playing the DEF CON qualifiers is I think like currently like 64. But I should really qualify this by saying like most of these people are beginners. Like we have a very um Oh, it's 66. All right. Yeah. So it's a lot of people, but like the vast majority of these people are like fairly new uh, to CTFs. And uh, so we, and, and I mean, the DEF CON, DEF CON competition is like basically designed to be really, really difficult. So as a beginner, you have very limited impact uh, during uh, both the qualifiers and the finals. So a lot of the people who are playing are mostly there to like, you know, uh, join in and like learn and have fun and like collaborate with other people and so on. Uh, but yeah, the team is is pretty big. Uh, if I, I do have a GitHub, but I usually don't like upload stuff from CTFs and, and so on. Uh, I do archive like everything well, almost every like solution script and, and so on from like every CTF I've ever played, basically, I have archived like locally, but I don't like upload the stuff. Um, but you can ask me for for specific things, uh, I guess. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's. It's uh, quite a quite a mix up in the rankings this year. I think there. It seems like a lot of the like old legendary teams are kind of like falling off a little bit, and like a lot of new stuff, a lot of new teams coming in, and and so on. So we'll see uh, how. Oh yeah, we uh, we won a CTF this uh, weekend as well. So that was nice. It completely ruined my sleep uh, schedule for this weekend, but uh, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like teams, uh, teams come and go. Um, Yeah, that's absolutely true. But I mean, Dragon Sector has been around for, for quite a while. But we also saw like uh, Eat Sleep Home Repeat, for example, another like great team. They kind of like basically disbanded as well. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like, you know, people get tired of playing CTFs or like their life situation changes and, and, and so on. Like there's nothing, nothing strange uh, with that. Uh, as long as the competitions uh, keep happening and we have good, high quality competitions, I think in the past few years, maybe like the past two or three years, uh, there's been like an absolute explosion in the number of competitions, which is cool. But there is also like a big influx of like really poor quality uh, CTF competitions and like to the point where it's kind of an issue, I think. So uh, we'll see how that that works out. I think uh, the the uh, 
there needs to be like maybe something like improved on the like uh I mean everyone likes like you know criticize the CTF time rating system and so on, but Oh yeah, absolutely agree. Like it's uh I definitely think it's 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 better if there is a bit of rotation, uh and like getting new people into it and so on. And what does it take to like get in to top of reversing in punch? I mean, yeah, it's like like everything else. It's just practice. Like, there's nothing. There's nothing magic about like binary exploitation or reverse engineering. It's just that it takes uh, quite a lot of effort and practice. And uh, I think, like, I personally, like, reverse engineering is like my favorite category. And I would like to do. So I've been for. <clears throat> I've been running like uh, trainings and like giving presentations and stuff about like introduction to like binary exploitation. And so for example, there's a recorded lecture on my YouTube channel about that, uh, to, for people to get started and so on. And, and I've been really wanting to do like something for reverse engineering, but it feels to me like reverse engineering is much more difficult to teach because it's much more difficult to set up like a specific list of like concepts or activities or things that you should know. It's very much a, uh, like a craft, like, uh, it's, uh, it's about identifying patterns and like knowing which tools to use in what situations and so on. Yeah. I mean, it, reverse engineering requires quite a lot of persistence uh, at, at points, at some points. Uh, it's like shaky. Yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty good uh, quote. But personally, like the thing I'm looking forward to uh, every year when it comes to reverse engineering is the Flaron uh, challenge. So this is organized by uh, FireEye. Uh, every like it's usually in like August September. It's a reverse engineering. Uh, it's like a CTF, but you're supposed to play it uh, alone, and it runs for like six weeks. So you typically have like a twelve or so challenges that you're supposed to solve, and the difficult challenges here they are really difficult. So it's kind of like the uh, um, you know the test of the year. So I I have this thing where so I run I run a marathon every year and i kind of do it to kind of like prove to myself that i'm still able to do it and i think for me playing the flaron challenge is kind of like a similar thing like i need to solve the flaron challenge every year to prove that like i'm like good enough as a reverse engineer uh so that's something to aim for if you want to to do reverse engineering. But you can definitely check out their previous year challenges. They're, they, I mean, they start out easy, so it, you can definitely like even as a beginner, you can probably solve the first few challenges without too much of an issue. But then uh, it gets uh, like it gets pretty difficult. But yeah, I mean, reverse engineering is like it's persistent combined with like a toolbox of tricks and methods and like a lot of like pattern recognition and stuff like that. For example, I, I wrote uh, an article for uh, paged out, um, where I talked about Um, like how to identify different uh, cryptography functions when you're reverse engineering, for example. Uh, uh, so that's like that's like a small thing that can go into your toolbox, but that by itself is more of like an isolated fact, uh, and and it will not really help you like with with like the craft of reverse engineering. That's something that just requires like a ton of practice but you should definitely do it because like, i i think it's a great uh, I, I mean it's my favorite uh cpf category yeah write tools like use tools write tools get comfortable with like 
you know, you you, need, you should be comfortable with programming to the to the level where it's like a useful tool for you. It's like you you might have to write a disassembler for a custom virtual machine or whatever, and that should come naturally uh, to you after a while. But yeah, um, I think that's uh, that's it for today. Um, I will be closing up the stream. So yeah, thanks everyone for for uh, joining. I hope you enjoyed um, like watching me solve these challenges. And uh, there will be a part three, which hopefully will be the last part, and uh, um, where we'll finish up the last challenges. So. Yeah. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, of course, you know, standard stuff. Like if you enjoyed this and you're not already, you should, like consider like subscribing to the channel to, to see, uh, you know, when, uh, uh, when I stream again and, and so on. I also typically post on Twitter when I'm streaming as well. Uh, and usually I have a little bit more um, margin like ahead of time uh, than this. I was just like, coming home and thought like let's do let's do some live streaming so that's was it was a bit spontaneous but yeah anyway as i said uh thanks for watching have a nice uh day evening night uh wherever you are